Today's social media segment is brought to you by Terrebonne General Health System. Your health is our legacy. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. We're back here on Bayou Time. I always want to talk about some news and also want to talk about education. It's a big part of what we do here in the area. Once again, I'm Martin Falson. Great to have on board. And once again, Dr. Anna, Anna, we say Anna. Anna. Yes, I sir. I like to put that Anna. Okay. <laughs> Anna Nandy. She's the <laughs> Vice Chancellor for Enrollment and Student Development at Fletcher Technical community college. Do do people mess it up a lot, the Anna, the Anna? Constantly. <laughs> and that's okay. When you when you grow up with a name like Anna, you'll respond to almost anything. Yeah. So it's fine. I like Anna. That's different though. So, sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. All right. So I know y'all are busy and y'all have a lot going on. So maybe we could start with the the open house on sure. April 9th. Let's talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. So tomorrow evening from four to six at our Shriver campus, we're gonna have our open house. So we have one, typically one open house in the spring at our main campus. And then we're trying to host um, a fall open house for our Thibodeau facility. So students can see the programs offered there. So tomorrow it's at the Shriver location and we're going to have representatives from all of our divisions, even those where the programs are not physically housed on that location. Mm -hmm. We'll have admissions assistance, financial aid assistance. We will have tours, um, we have, as you probably know, we have two buildings on that site. So we'll have tours of our main building and then our integrated production technologies building. We'll have line worker students out doing demonstrations. We'll have drone demonstrations, a whole bunch of things. And we always encourage students to come. It's It doesn't start with a program at four o'clock and end at six. It's a come and go as you please. So mm -hmm. for those folks who maybe work until five, we wanted to make sure that there was some time for them to just stop by after work. But for those folks maybe who work different shifts and wanna show up for four, that's fine. As mm -hmm. soon as you've seen everything you wanna see, you're free to go. So maybe we- Maybe a cool way to, I mean, when we were growing up, the technical school, it was perceived different mm -hmm. because it wasn't marketed differently it, it wasn't an option it was just but y'all have done such a great job of, of presenting and making it sort of hip for the younger generation is, is that yes. sort of the way y'all trying to do it we have worked so diligently to change what what we refer to as the stigma around mm -hmm. community college oftentimes students or, or parents or grandparents will say oh you know this student can't make it in a university they'll just go to the community college or um they aren't going to go to college they're going to go to the trade school and at the end of the day any education after you know, secondary education, we, we consider to be higher education. So students going into fields like welding or automotive, that's still college. Mm -hmm. And we do offer tr more traditional paths of general studies or business and associates degrees. Those do transfer to universities. We have a lot of our students who start with us and then transfer out. Um, but we, we are find ourselves fortunate because we can offer that variety. Mm -hmm. So we can have a trade program. We can have an HVAC technician, mm -hmm. but we can also prepare students in nursing, in um, cardiopulmonary, again, business, general studies. Those students who know they want to, to pursue a degree that's going to be higher than an associate's degree, they can start off with us, get two years out of the way for mm -hmm. half the tuition and fees, and then transfer those credits over. We have tons of transfer agreements with universities, in, both locally mm -hmm. and, and beyond the state. You know, if I could find the time, I always wanted, my dad was an electrician. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to learn electricity because it sure. scares the heck out of yes. me right now, but I always wanted to learn it because I'm always around it. Mm -hmm. But for someone a little older who wants to go back and learn a different way of life, mm -hmm. don't y'all invite that? 
Absolutely. So we are lucky to be able to offer what we call credit programs, which is the more traditional approach to college where you have a three credit hour course and you sit in class, you know, X number of times a week. But we also offer what's called workforce or non-credit classes, mm -hmm. and they can lend themselves more to what you're referencing. Maybe you just want to learn about basic electricity, right? Mm -hmm. um, or automotive or things of that nature. And we're able to, and we partner with a lot of business and industries to offer trainings of that sort for their folks or even just one-offs, right? Right after the storm, we did host a few trainings um, and posted the videos online. And we would encourage you guys to go and visit our website. It's Fletcher.edu. It's great. Uh, constantly making updates to allow for people to be able to see the different things that we're doing. But we did drywall installation and we offered a program right after the storm about basic electricity, how to reinstall a fan, right? Mm -hmm. Things of that nature that teaches the basics of the program, we're able to offer that as well. Yeah, how to install a fan without getting shocked. Exactly. <laughs> That's very and, important. And do you find that, and we'll talk about more in the second segment, but do you find that most people who like go take an electrical course are going, Man, this was fairly easy. Why was it scaring me all these years? years? Well, you know, it would be unfair for me to say because I don't necessarily, you know, yeah. interact with the students once they've gotten to that point. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that our students leave with a heightened awareness of things. Mm -hmm. They, ha when you have an understanding of something, you are, I would imagine, a little less threatened yeah. or frightened right. by it. And electricity is understandably something to be alerted yeah. and alarmed by. But once you have that basic level of understanding and how to address things, there is a comfort that comes with it. I would assume it. that welding is very similar. similar. <laughs> yeah, people don't want their eyes. You know? Exactly. Talking about the solar eclipse today and all that. All right, let's do this. We're going to take a short break. Uh, we're going to come right back with Dr. Anna, and she is going to talk about some other things that are going on. This is a jewel of a place, and I know most of you pass by it a lot, and we'll talk more about it, and it's coming up next. Don't go away. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. All right, we are back with Dr. Anna Nanny, and she once again is the Vice Chancellor for Enrollment and Student Development at Fletcher Technical Community College. Let's talk about Community College Week because I'm sure that's an exciting time for you all because the focus is really on Absolutely. community college. So it's a really good opportunity for us at the community college level to focus on all of the things that we offer that I think oftentimes is missed by the community because we could do a better job of communicating it out or um, just getting the word out there. But what we try to do during this week, it's a week identified at the state level. So all the community colleges in the state celebrate this week. And we try to have events on campus for our current students. We try to host things for our prospective students. You can see here, we have quite the schedule this week. Some of these items, we, you know, we talked about the open house a little bit. Mm -hmm. We have, that's for prospective students, right? right? Folks who are interested. But we also have for our current students, we have a blood drive, we have a photo contest. The handshake training is interesting. That's actually for students to connect students with employers. So for all for all of the employers that we partner with, create an account on Handshake and mm -hmm. students can create an account and they can link together in that way. So that's a really great training opportunity. We also have our Veterans Resource Fair. Mm -hmm. We work diligently to ensure our veterans who have done so much to protect us and our, um, you know, being able to do all of yeah, this, yeah. we want to make sure that they have focused resources available to them. And on our campus, we have what's called our Veterans Resource Center. It's a space designated to veteran students, specifically dependents and their spouses, where we have 
additional resources on how, you know, how to get in touch with VA, mm -hmm. how to use VA benefits, things of that nature, right? And so having this resource fair, folks from outside of the, of the um, student body are invited mm -hmm. as well to see if there's anything they can use as a resource. And, and if they need education, we're there to support and help them with the enrollment process as well. Like I said, y'all have such a unique institution in our community. It's grown so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, every year, it's just grown. It. And, and I know for those I could probably ask that came on board way in the beginning, if I asked them, did you really expect mm -hmm. this to grow this big? Their answer would probably be, yeah, of course we did, <laughs> but not really, but it really has blossomed then. Yeah, it has. And and this year, I'm lucky enough to make my 10th year working at Fletcher and being a part of that. Thank you. Being a part of that has been so just rewarding. You know, we've like many institutions, it's not unique to us. We have had our hurdles, mm -hmm. you know, I being over enrollment, you know, we were such an uptick, right? Right before COVID and all of this work and everything was kind of coming together. And then we had COVID and it crumbled. And I was like, I was so offended by that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not personal. COVID. Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, we are working to recover and we have Ida. And again, it's not unique just to us, but seeing the resilience and the leadership team come together and the students and the faculty and staff, it's been an honor to be a part of it and to see the ways that it has grown and the partnerships that have come about and the student lives we've been able to impact, it's been it's been really phenomenal. I would think that after, not so much COVID, but after Ida, mm -hmm. I know owning a business, owning residences, owning roofs, <laughs> that everybody was trying to find contractors to do jobs. Electricians mm -hmm. were one of those. Sure. Uh, different things. I would think that would make people go, I have to learn a little more so I don't get so vulnerable for Absolutely. the next stone. Absolutely. And that was part of the reason I believe that our academic folks did create those short term training courses, the how to install a fan, how to do mm -hmm. drywall, um, because we are here. Our mission as an institution is to serve the community. And so that's literally the least we can do, right, is to help our community rebuild and and creating something that people can go to that it's just a video i mean yes students have youtube right but you mm -hmm. never really know the credentials of the person putting up the video Very on true. youtube yeah. and so like i said on our website we have um video trainings just for a few things here and there that mm -hmm. were established as a way to help our community recover and that was a big part of what dr strickland and the leadership team wanted to be able to do for the community yeah, so big week and uh what do y'all try to emphasize i mean I'm sure you see so many diverse age groups. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you this, do, do you find more females or coming up to learn trades that way back when was sort of taboo? Yeah. But now they're jumping in. Yes, and I'll say our population for the technical programs are, are still somewhat traditional mm -hmm. in the sense that someone studying HVAC or automotive is still typically male, though we absolutely have female students and we have students of all ages. Right. Uh, and the and the technical programs as it relates to nursing and allied health is still largely female, though we do have males and females of all ages. Um, but you know, just the diversity of the population on campus, our traditional student is probably not an 18 year old anymore. We probably have more 25, 26 year olds who are enrolling mm. and, uh, and it, for several reasons, either because they didn't go to college right out of high school, they need to learn a new skill set. Whatever the reason, I think it always helps out to have that diversity on campus so more and more students feel comfortable. I'll tell you what, it, it's so neat to see that, and y'all do such a, a good job. And every time I talk to somebody at Fletcher, I get this enthusiasm. So I guess enthusiasm breeds enthusiasm. Sure. It's a way of life for y'all, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, seeing our students succeed and, and knowing the student who comes in and is scared and is unsure and doesn't know how they're going to make it happen and compare that to the student that leaves at graduation who knows they can do it who's shown their children that they can do it or their families um or themselves that they can do it that's always the biggest reward for sure well dr nanny we appreciate you coming on board and hopefully you'll get some uh more numbers in there to see what i call a jewel in the area and thank you all so much thank for joining you. us and Good luck in the future. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. There you have it. Once again, our information on Fletcher, they do a great job over there. So 
you might want to check it out. And, uh, of course, you can watch us on our apps, too, and let people know about the open houses and everything that goes on at Fletcher. There you see it right there. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more right here on Bayou Time. 